Condemnation to death is when there is no covering of the blood of the Passover lamb over you. As Christian, Jesus is our Lord and Savior and therefore his blood has to be over us. That's why we say I plead the blood of Jesus. We have an anchor that keeps the soul stand fast and sharp and the Savior's Lord grounded firm and deep. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Get rid of sin and you'll enjoy the power of God. The power of God comes when you bury sin. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. the sermon for today we're continuing from last week the ingenuity of God hallelujah that was part one part two the ingenuity of God and his manifestation I did establish the ingenuity of God they'll put it on the screen for you I did establish last week that we do have a right to the covenant of Abraham. We have a right to the covenant of Isaac. I did say last week when I were in the ingenuity of God in the other tape, part one, that most Christians, if you ask them, what is this covenant that we're talking about? Most Christians cannot tell you what's the covenant of Abraham. Most Christians cannot tell you what's this inheritance that we have in Christ. They think it's just about us dying and going to heaven. No, God wants you to have the manifestation of what he has given unto you right here, right now, enjoying your physical existence before you transcend and you transmutate or you change again and return back into the spirit form existing in the heavenly realms. You are a spirit being existing in the earthly physical realm right now. The, the prophets and, and pastors and teachers have gone through the land, all the firefalls, mini, firefall ministry. They've all gone across the earth telling us all and teaching us over the years that man is a tripartite being, that man is a spirit. We have a body and we, we, well, we have a soul and we live in a body. Everybody should know that by now. They have spent thousands and thousands and even millions of dollars trying to go across the whole world, letting us understand that fundamental thing about yourself. You are a triple being. You are a spirit. You possess a soul, which is your mind, your intellect, your will, your emotions. And you live in a physical body, which is flesh and blood and bones. Hallelujah. Lig ligaments and tendons and all that good stuff. That makes us function. This is just an earth suit. Earth suit. That, like you get a space suit to function in space. You have an earth suit for you to function in this tangible world. I did establish that. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 to 29, from that scripture, verse 29, we did establish that if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The question becomes, what promise? If you belong to Christ, possessive, if you be Christ's, then, as a fact, you are Abraham's seed, and you are heirs, I mean, he is Abraham's seed, and you are now heirs according to the promise. There is only one seed, Jesus the Christ, is Abraham's seed. If you be Christ, who is Abraham's seed, then you are heirs according to the promise because you belong to Christ. Therefore, Christ died and left you Abraham's promise in his will, per se. The will is the word of God. The will is the testament. The death of the testator affects the testament that he has written, the will and testament. That is why when somebody dies, they read out the will and his testament. What you have, what we have called the Old Testament and the New Testament, is simply the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Is somebody with me? Moving on. We establish in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. If you don't have it, you can take these notes down. I'm not going in there. You're going to go read it for yourself now. 
And that tells us the promises of God. God promised Abraham that he would give him a great name. Hallelujah. Somebody say a great name. God said, I will make you a great nation. Hallelujah. He will say, I will make you a great nation. And God said, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Hallelujah. Say, I will be able to bless all the families of the earth. If you are only blessing your own family, you have not even tapped into the blessings of Abraham yet. If you can only provide for yourself and your family and that's it, you ain't done nothing yet. Because that is not your promise. You should be a distribution center. You should be able to carry the families of the earth. In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed is what the promise of Abraham was. And is, and we are heirs according to that promise. In Genesis 22, verses 16 to 17, you read Genesis 22, that's very good affecting of the promise. God did come back the second time and said to Abraham, that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. The Lord did a fantastic thing right there. This is God coming out of heaven, making bold statements and promising everywhere. He just dropping promises everywhere like, you know, it's nothing for him. And literally, it's nothing for him. I learned many years ago from a great man of God in Florida, Dr. Max Sharona. He said, it does not take God any more energy to create a forest than it takes for him to create a blade of grass. I learned that over 10, 12 years ago. That blew my mind and opened my perception. It does not take God any more energy to create a whole forest than to create a blade of grass. The question becomes, are you going to ask him for a forest or are you just going to take a blade of grass? So the option is yours now. What do you want God to do for you? Glory be to Jesus. God did something in Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah tells us, and I want to start off there today. Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 11, chapter 29, verses 11 and 12. We know that very well, and most of the time we quote those two verses. And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That is where we usually stop. Most Christians only know that verse. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. But verses 12, 13, and 14 is actually the affecting of that promise. Verses 12, 13, and 14, keep reading down so you can get the whole thing. It says, then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. That's in the King James Version. And you shall seek me and find me. And when you shall search for me with all your heart. So there's some work to do here. The thoughts of God towards you are not just thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You say it and say it and say it and say it. And then you go lay down and sleep and fold your hands and fold your feet. That's not what it says. It says, then you shall ask of me. You shall pray to me. I shall answer you. Then you shall seek for me, you shall search for me with all your heart. And then verse 14 says, and I will be found of you. When you seek me and search for me, I will be found by you, Amplified says. And the Lord says, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. So wherever you have been separated from God, that you are believing God for, if you are believing God to get you out of poverty, I'm going to specifically address poverty and wealth because the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that money answereth all things. We are praying for healing. Some people really just need money so they can buy better quality of food so they can eat better so their health can be in better shape we may we understand i'm not just preaching to people in america i'm preaching to people across the world there are people in parts of africa that all they need is to be able to have some food that is a well-balanced diet that they'll be able to feed the children 
rather than continuously giving them excess carbohydrate because that is what is available and can feed the belly and can fill the children and put them to sleep in peace. So don't just say, why is she saying that? Because you live comfortably in one nation or another or one continent or another. I'm talking to millions and millions and millions of people across the world. Glory be to God's holy name. Thank God for all the broadcasting stations that are taking this away on the air. Hallelujah. Last week, as we were looking at Jacob's issues here, and our, uh, our reader for today was Brother Lionel, and we got the reading again from Genesis chapter 30. So we're going to pick up where we left off. I just stopped at Jeremiah for you to know that God's thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace. God wants you at peace. Thoughts of good things. Not thoughts of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. God is broadcasting his thoughts towards you. He is sending thought waves towards you. And all he's thinking of you is peaceful thoughts. Happiness thoughts. Wellness thoughts. Thoughts to give you peace. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, everything whole. Shalom. How is your shalim today? Are you whole? How is your health? How is your wealth? How are your children? How is your job? How is the family? Is all well with you? How is the extended family? How are your projects that you are doing? Shalom. Is all well with all your projects? Do you have a new vision? Shalom. How is that coming forth? Thoughts of peace, thoughts of shalom is what God has for you. And now let's see what God has for Jacob as we were looking at in Genesis chapter 30. And that's where we're going to continue for today. Genesis chapter 30. Yes, we did. I'm going to brush up what we did say last week and we'll go to verse 37. Yeah. We did see that Jacob did go to Laban and ask him, what shall be my wages? And the amplifier said, he say, state your salary and I will give it. Laban in English, Laban in Hebrew. Laban said, state your salary and I will give it. Jacob says, I don't want you to give me anything. I just want you to do this for me. Let me go through the cattle and anyone that is ring staked, speckled, spotted, or brown will be mine. And the one that is all without any speckle or spotted or any other kind will be yours. And he separated them, the cattle, into two herds. One herd for Laban and one herd for himself. His was the smaller. And he's put three days journey between the herds. Hallelujah. That was Jacob's business plan. When we come to God, everybody has a desire of what they want God to do for them. We have been taught faith. We have been taught the giving of your offerings and of your tithe. We have been praying for a long time. And some people have got to the point where you're asking yourself, when are things going to manifest for me? Today is your day. Or rather, last week was your day, because that was the foundation. Go back and watch the ingenuity of God, part one. Stop the tape. Go back, watch the ingenuity of God, part one. If you're looking at this on, re on, on recording, you can find it on the YouTube channel, P-O-C-I-M channel. P-O-C-I-M channel. Of course, you'll see our ministry logo. Click on that one. You'll see the ingenuity of God, part one. This is part two. So visit our YouTube channel. While you're there, please hit subscribe and tap the like button. Hallelujah. And the notification bell. Glory be to God most high. Moving on, what Jacob's business plan was, he took the trees, some rods of different kinds of trees the chestnut tree, the hazel tree, and the poplar tree, and he peeled the white spots in them. And he laid them down, he made banda, for those who understand that. He made like a grill. He laid them down so that whenever the cattle came to drink, they will look at it, focus on it, and what they are seeing are spots. If you're looking at spots, all you will see when you take your eyes off it 
are spots again. If you're looking at a light continuously and you take your eye off the light, you will see spots again. All the cattle were seeing are spots and speckled. What Jacob wanted was spots and speckled cattle. So he made sure that that is what he was absolutely focused on. That is what he was looking at. And I can tell you that Jacob got this from Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. Let's go over to Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. Glory be to God. We can have it on the screen for you guys so you can see something. Yes. This was God. The Bible says, God was dealing with Abraham here. And it says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Again, verse, 15, verse 5. And God brought Abraham forth abroad and said, look now. Somebody say, look now. Look now. Look now. When we look, we use our eyes. Look now. God was teaching Abraham how to manifest. Yes. Look now. Open your eyes, Abraham, and look now towards the heavens. And see the stars. So shall thy seed be. Are you able to count the stars? Abraham came outside every night after that. And he was looking at the stars. At that time, Abraham's name was Abraham. And then he changed his name to Abraham. He had no child. And he changed his name to the father of many nations, Abraham. Because now he is looking at the stars. Because so shall his seed be. Just like his grandson had put the cattle now in front of the rods. So they also shall look now towards the speckled rods, towards the, uh, the peeled rods, towards the ring stake rods. He looking now, all Jacob was seeing was speckled and spotted and ring stake. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to understand something here. That the Bible says, let's go to Genesis chapter 37. And I'm going to read it from the scriptures themselves. Genesis uh, chapter 30, verses 37. And Jacob took him rods of the green poplar and of the hazel and the chestnut tree and peeled white streaks in them and made them, made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink that they could conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods because they were looking at the rods. And brought forth cattle ring streaked, speckled and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring streak and all the brown in the, her in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flock by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger were Jacob's. Hallelujah. So what happened, I explained last week and I'm explaining again. Jacob put the rods, that was his business plan. Just like his grandfather was looking at the stars, he was looking at the spots. The cattle were looking at the spots. When they gave back to animals, they produced spotted animals. And that was Jacob's wages. When the weak and feeble cattle came to drink and to, and to conceive, to have sex together and conceive, Jacob did not put the, the spotted sticks and the rods in the place because he did not want the weak cattle to conceive for him. When the stronger came to conceive, he put it out. Now that's good business strategy. In this ministry, we have asked people several times to come up with a business plan that you want. Jacob, first of all, identified what he wanted. What he wanted was ring streak cattle, spotted cattle, 
Now the question becomes, what do you want? What does Patricia want? What does Paulina want? What does Jacob want? What does Samuel want? What does Ibrahim want? What does Raymond want? What does Ramon want? What do you want, Curtis? Ray Ray, Kiki, what do you want? Do you even know what you want? The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. I have come to understand when it says that he may run that readeth it, he's not just talking about those who come to help you. Everybody on the earth can run that reads it. Everybody in the heavens can run that reads it. The angels shall hearken to the voice of his word. Hallelujah. And they will go out and perform that which you have requested. Some people say, well, all I want is money. All I want is to be happy. Happiness is not a thing. Happiness is a state of being. You are responsible for creating your own happiness. When you start understanding that you are responsible for creating your own wealth, your own provision, your own happiness, just like Laban said to Jacob, state your wages. It didn't say, I am going to give you this. You are the one who is going to state your wages on this planet. Whatever Adam called them, that is what they were. If you say, I want to live in a three-bedroom house, you will live in a three-bedroom house. If you say, I want to live in a ten-bedroom house, you will live in a ten-bedroom house. The question becomes, what do you want? State your wages and I will give it. Jacob stated his wages, then he came up with a plan, and later on we will see that he did not just come up with a plan, but the plan was given unto him. And for me to show you that the plan was given unto him, that would be found in Genesis chapter 31, but I'm getting there. What do you want? I want a business. What kind of business do you want? Write it out. You want a clothing business? Write it out. I want to have people working for me? Write it out. I want to have a store where I sell clothes. What kind of clothes? Do you want male wear, female wear, uh, multi wear, family wear? What do you want? You want to sell food. You want to sell uh, 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 airline tickets. You want to own your own airplane. You want to sell land. You want to be a real estate agent. Write it out. Now focus on it. Put your rods out, which is your business plan. And whenever you look at your business plan, you are manifesting, you are bringing it forth. Keep it in your focus, keep it in your mind. Every time you come to pray, every day you are going out, when you are in your, in, in your, in your workplace, wherever you are at the grocery store, whether you are at Tesco's, Quick Save, Sainsbury's, uh, 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 Kroger, Publix, wherever, Big Mac, Safeway, whatever you want to call it, at Big Markets, whatever, Long Step, wherever you're trading, whatever you're doing. Make sure your business plan is in your head. They looked at the cattle, they looked at the rods, they looked at the ring stake and speckle. Now I want you to see Jacob's dilemma. Jacob was not just trying to produce this cattle. He had to get the cattle to also look at what he was looking at. So they will know what they were supposed to produce. What do you want to produce? Are you looking at the right image? Last week I did say, if you don't have friends who are wealthy people, because birds of a feather do flock together, then you do get yourself a magazine, get yourself TV shows or channels, and look at pictures and create in your image what you want to see. A lot of people spend their time driving through poverty-filled neighborhoods. Put some gas in your car. Take a walk down the street. Drive through wealthy neighborhoods. Look at the houses. It doesn't cost anything to look. Don't say, Pastor Paulina, where am I going to get the money from? It's going to come because you are calling it forth. You are creating it. When God said, let there be light, 
the only light that existed was in himself. There was no light out there. The Holy Ghost was hovering over the face of the deep. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. There was no light out there. There was light in him. So what he said was, Vayahi, light in me, be. Actually, he said, light be. So when I say money comes, it's not because I am deaf or you are crazy or you have been told, you, you know, you're losing it. All these faith people are talking rubbish. I'd rather talk rubbish using the word of God than try to talk sense listening to people who are actual millionaires telling you not to listen to how to become rich. Mainstream media and the news networks and those who ridicule preachers, all of them are millionaires. I hope you're paying attention. That the people you are listening to on television who are giving you the news are sitting on fat bank accounts. Whilst they are telling you not to listen to people who are trying to get you out of poverty. Meanwhile, none of them are getting you out of poverty. I have never seen Anderson Cooper make a TV show or tell you how to get out of poverty. If it's there, please send it to me. I've never seen it is all I'm saying. I've never seen anybody on CNN, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CBL, Fox 5, Fox News, 11 Alive, all the Alphabet News Network. I ain't never seen any of them send you a, a, a paperwork or a pamphlet or telling you how do you get to their level step by step. How do you get rich? None of them. But they are quick to tell you that all the church wants is your money. Like you have any. They are sitting on multi-million dollars. But telling you. To stay poor. To stay broke. To stay on that sofa there. Snacking on, on your coffee. Snacking on your potato chips. Whilst you are watching them. Tell you how you should think. How you should live. Keeping you in abject poverty. And keeping you down there. Because they are formulating your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Who is feeding your mind? You're spending hours and hours listening to the TV in the background. You say, well, I'm not actually listening. It's just playing. Yeah, but it's feeding your atmosphere negative things and it's not growing you at all. Put the scriptures on and watch something happen. I am saying to you. Your subconscious is being programmed by the external world. I will reprogram myself if I were you. I have reprogrammed myself. I did give you several testimonies from our family last week on how we manifest using the fourth dimension, which is this. How God had taught Jacob, and Jacob explained it here in the scriptures. It's written out for us. And this same plan has not changed. Ain't nobody came up with another one or a different one. It's the same plan. Everybody that tells you they have a secret is using this exact same plan. This is the foundation of the plan. Genesis chapter 15 is when God actually took out Abraham to go look at the stars so he can manifest and bring forth what he wanted. Let's go to Je uh, Genesis chapter 31 verse 17. Verse 7 to verse 13. Just flip over your Bible. Hallelujah. Jacob became very rich. And Jacob was talking to his family now, his wives and his children. That's where this verse comes from. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to fill it in for you. I want you to know that when you become rich, first of all, people's countenance are going to change towards you. Your family ain't going to like you no more. Because you've changed. And they're going to tell you. I don't know what's up with you these days. You've changed. Of course I've changed. I'm growing. Then they ask you the question. You think you're better than me? No, I don't think I'm better than you. But I think I'm better enough than I was yesterday. And to the place that I am, I'm good for where I am. I'm still going somewhere. Or oh, you think you're too big? Not yet. I'm not big enough yet. 
I'm growing larger and larger and larger than life. The Bible says that you shall grow in glory and glory and glory. You shall increase. The man Isaac waxed great. He became rich. He went forth and became very rich. You don't just stay in one place. And when you do change, when you do make that change, when you do increase, expect it. I guarantee you, you are going to have people ask you this question. Who do you think you are? Who do they think you are? Who do they think you think you're better than us now? Now that she's got a little bit of money or now that he's got a little bit of money, he thinks I'm better, he's better than me. No, the person don't even have your time. The person actually is not thinking about you, let alone thinking about whether they're better than you. Now that's the ridiculous part of it. We're not even thinking about you. We're thinking about God most high and how we can increase and how you can move for the next level. If you're doing business on a small, small this year, you should be doing it bigger next year. The word for this year in this ministry is occupy till I come. We are here for transformation. The vision of this ministry is to watch lives transform. We are being transformed from glory to glory to glory. If you stay with us, you will never be the same again. Last week I did say, I do not consider myself personally to be human. I consider myself to be a phenomena. I also know that I am a catalyst. I change things. I'm thinking about this right now. I already knew that years ago. So when you say, who do I think I am? You haven't even thought yet that maybe that's a phenomenon. We've seen like a hurricane come through, a volcano erupting. You ain't seen the causes of water and the water waves move yet. You ain't seen waterfalls fall yet. You haven't had 10,000 gallons of water hit the floor and continue to hit the floor. The vibration of Niagara Falls that comes through, hallelujah. That is power. Who do I think I am? I think I am the one that steps out of the presence of the most high God. Now the question becomes, who do you think you are? You answer for yourself. You decide who you want to be. Do you want to drive a little Toyota? It's not a problem. I drive a Toyota also. I've had one before. I think. I should have. (laughs) I actually have a Mercedes Benz right now. Well, several of them. Which also was a manifestation I'm not telling you this to impress you. I'm telling you this because it's possible. Because there was a day when I took a piece of paper and a pen. And I wrote in my book in church. Whilst the preacher was preaching. I wrote in my book. I am buying a black Mercedes Benz. And there are people in this ministry that have seen that notebook. And the debt I wrote it many, many years ago. That I have talked to and showed them that writing in my book. And I did buy one black and cash. Hallelujah. Cash. You can do the same. You, are crea- you have the creative power of God Almighty. Genesis 15 verse 5. He brought them out to see the stars. That was Abraham and God. Now Genesis chapter 31 verse 7. I was bringing you up to speed. The countenance of Laban has changed towards Jacob. Then the brothers of, of, of Rachel and Leah were saying that their father's wealth has been transferred to Jacob. Now listen to this. Jacob was talking to his wives and he said, And your father had deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. I want you to know that when you enter into the business world, When you enter into your job, when you enter into your school, when you enter into your place that you conduct, whatever business you conduct, the situation is going to change. You are going to have difficulties. uh, Laban changed his wages 10 times because he saw that the man was increasing constantly. So, okay, how about we retweak your contract because you look like you're flourishing too much. So, let's, let's re-examine this again. Let's renegotiate your contract. Let's redo this again. He changes wages ten times. If you are renting a shop out, don't be surprised when, for no reason, they just decide to give you notice. That's the time you decide, I'm going to buy the plaza. 
That's not the time you quit the business. Did you hear me? Somebody should have said amen right there. You don't just buy, you don't just rent a shop, you buy the whole plaza and you become the landlord and rent out the thing. I want you to expand your thinking. The reason I'm addressing this right here, let us continue. It says it changes wages 10 times, but God suffered him not to prevail over him or to hurt him. And if he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages, all the cattle bore speckle. And if he said the other way, all the cattle brought forth the other way. And verse 9, thus has God taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. Verse 10, and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes. Now pay attention, Jacob is telling you what happened to him. Don't think you know this. Pay attention. And it came to pass that at the time the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams were leaped upon the cattle, were rims straight, speckled, and grizzled. Hallelujah. Let's go continue. He's telling you the dream. And the angel of the Lord spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am, Enani. And he said, lift up now thine eyes. Remember when he said to his grandfather, lift up your eyes and look at the skies and see. That, you know, you see, God has the same thing. He wants you to open your eyes and look. The same angel came. He said, lift up now thine eyes and see. All the rams which leaped upon the cattle are ring streaked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I want you to understand this today. God sees all that has happened to you. God, see what they've done to me. God, see my situation. God, help my situation. The Lord sees all that Laban had done to Jacob. The Lord sees all that has happened to you. The Lord sees how you are treated at your place of work. The Lord sees what they are doing to you. Even the things you don't see, the Lord sees them. And the Lord will fix them for you. Because the Lord did not cause Laban to hurt Jacob. But the Lord strategically gave Jacob the dream. So now we see where Jacob got the plan from. God will give you a business plan. For the thoughts that the Lord thinks towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. If you want to go into the real estate business, you want to start rent out condos in Barkhead. You want to stay, rent out downtown Dallas. You want to hold the convention centers in Houston. You want to take over Wall Street. You want to go for J.P. Morgan and Associates. You want to go for Goldman Sachs. If you want to do anything, the Lord will give you the idea the wisdom and the plan like he did for Jacob somebody say I receive it, I receive it hallelujah. hallelujah Jacob <laughs> had a dream in the night and in the dream God showed him the rams that were mounting and having sex with the cattle where the ring struck the speckled and the, and the grizzled and that is what he had put in his focus. And it was embedded in his spirit. And in his subconscious mind, all he could see, even when he lay down, that was what he produced. Hallelujah. What he wanted is what he saw. The thing you want is the thing you will see. If you want happiness, happiness is what you will see. If you're having fights in your marriage, if you're having fights with your children, see you and your family going on vacation. See you and your family eating together at home see you and your children coming in to see you if your children have not visited you see them coming in with their suitcases and sleeping and spending weekends with you see yourself going out to the fair with the grandchildren see yourself going out on a yacht see yourself enjoying the day out in the sun hallelujah see yourself watching the sun rise in the east glory be to God's holy name as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. People usually say, and I've said that for years, that you attract what you want. You faith it in. By faith you receive what you want. 
I was corrected recently, hallelujah, by another sister, hallelujah, in the faith. And that's Dr. Cindy Trim. And she says, you do not attract what you want. No, you don't. You attract who you are. I said, Jesus, son of David, king of Israel. This lady said, you attract who you are. Because when you conceive that you are rich, you conceive that you are wealthy, your psyche change, your internal being change. You are now a wealthy person. You have become wealthy. Your become wealthy person is now here present with you. You are trying to manifest that person in the physical realm. So who you are, I am a business owner. So you attract yourself the business owner. You don't attract yourself the employee who is taking instructions down at the, at the, at the Walmart. That's a great job, by the way, taking instructions down at the wall. My paying your bills, it's, it's sowing your seeds. That's not your, that's not your answer, but that's your seed, your bag of seeds. Hallelujah. You continue to pay your tithe, you continue to pay your offering, and continue to pray the principles of God, and you will manifest it. You want to be a real estate agent. You want to be the uh, 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 owner of an airline. You want to be the owner of a tourism company. You want to be the person that owns cruise ships. You understand, I'm not telling you you want to own a, a little candy store, right? You have to have big dreams. Think big. Think big. Think big. Now, I have a special, uh, uh, special word for people who are not necessarily from the Western world. We have been conditioned to think small. Because there was no way of understanding how things worked, it was normal for everybody around to be average and about the same. So because your family were not expecting you to be so successful, you were not encouraged to dream too big. Because they were scared you were going to be disappointed. So as a child, if you're watching the Olympics, and you see somebody ice skating, and you live in a mud hut over there in Binkolo, or you live behind Bafudia, there ain't no way you ain't never seen snow, first of all. In some remote village somewhere out there in the boonies, you know, in, over in the tropics by the equator, you ain't never seen that before. But you see somebody spinning on an ice skate, on an ice rink. And this little baby child is looking at the thing and thinking, oh my God, I could do that one day. What do your parents tell you? No, 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 don't, don't even go there. You ain't going to be there. No, no way, because there's no ice around here, honey. So they discourage you right there. Don't think big, because you're not going to achieve it, not even in this lifetime. What our parents and grandparents should have done was encourage us to think big and manifest big. What we were told was aim at the sky. You will fall on the mountain. God forbid. If I aim at the sky, I want the sky. I don't want to fall on a mountain. If I want to be a real estate agent, I want to become a real estate agent. If I want to be a landlord, I don't want to be a tenant that sublets. I don't want to rent a house and then rent other rooms in the house. Oh, that's not the level of landlord you want to be. Maybe you want to be the person that owns the entire subdivision. I'm double dog daring you to think big. Think big. Blow your mind. It costs nothing to think. I am motivating you right now. The problem we have in the world is not that God cannot produce. The problem we have in the world is we do not even know what we want. Is we do not even know what is possible. And all things are possible. We sing songs that we don't even understand. All means all. It means I can own cargo ships. And I can be putting ships to sail in the waters. And I can be transporting thousands of containers per ship in international shipping routes and control shipping lanes. When was the last time you had somebody tell you that? 
or encourage you to think like that. When we first said we were going to have a television ministry, at that time there was no television ministry in Africa. Television ministry was very new. Christian television, let me put it that way. Christian television was very new in England. The God Network, Rory and Wendy Alec, were the first ones trying to have a TV network. We were partners with them. We were standing with them. We were dreaming with them. They were renting space in a building. And then a miracle happened. Nickelodeon, the channel, moved out and gave them the whole floor. Hi, Wendy. I remember the testimony. Hi, Rory. Nickelodeon gave them the whole floor. At that time, we were young and, you know, innocent. And all we had is faith and our Bibles. And we trust the God of heaven and earth. And we knew that one day, we would dream big. We will have a TV station. We thought it was going to be in Africa. We didn't know how big God would blow it. And understand that satellites control the whole world. And anybody from anywhere can pull down our, our program now from any part of the world. Glory be to God most high. And that you can find on the nownetwork.com. Hallelujah. And that we're on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. You can tune in from anywhere in the world. We're also on decap25.com. And you can also get that on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. And on Sundays at 9 p.m. And you can watch us there. We had a dream. And it came to pass. I want you to know that whatever dream you have put down, I am here to bring it forth. Manifest that which you are believing God for. I said I was talking to everybody not of the Western nations. But there are people in the Western nations who might just need to listen in and hear this. I'm not going to ask anybody to scroll past. You can stop and listen. What has been programmed into us, you are the sum total of everything that has happened to you in life. As a child, what you learned in school was what your teachers knew and the environment in which your teachers went to college what they learned, and what the socio-economic and political situation in whatever country you were was happening, that was what was imputed and affected and shaped and structured your life. That's just facts. Double facts. What happened at your house was the upbringing of your great-grandparents, what they knew in the 1800s, they taught your grandparents in the 1900s, and whatever that one developed also during the 1900s is what they gave to your parents. What your parents had is the best that they had for you. And we thank them for that. But I want you not to settle. I want you to go back generations and find out where did I get this information from. Some things you are doing was done by your great grandparents that was born in 1850. That was taught to your grandmother, taught to your mother, taught to your father, and is being taught to you, and now you are teaching your children something that was done in 1800s. And you don't even know why you're doing it. The reason they were using flames was because there was no electricity. The reason they were sitting there blowing the firewood under the pot was because there was no gas stove. Can you imagine you still have a gas stove and you're still trying to blow the fire under the pot for no reason at all? That's how we're trying to live. Your internal programming, you can run with this one, controls everything about you. This is where you need a paradigm shift. Your internal programming is what we call your culture. Your existence, your environment, where you come from. Where you come from is not reflective of where you're going. I cannot keep hanging to where I come from and what I know if I want to go to a level I have never been to. I have to leave that behind. Abraham had to get out of Ur of the Chaldees 
for him to have the promised land. I cannot hold on to the past which controls how I see things. Your culture controls your perception. How do you see things? Yesterday I saw a video of an 18 month old baby, a little baby, 18 months old, that was snowboarding. Snowboarding 18 month old baby. It's my first time seeing it. Maybe a lot of babies do that. I don't know. It's my first time seeing that. The baby was dressed warm and was trying to get herself started on the snowboard. And was pushing. Little 18-year-old baby with no instructions. Obviously, they've taught the baby before and they've done this before because the parents were recording. Next thing I knew, this baby took off, sliding down. And the little dog was watching them also, was playing with the baby. was not paying attention. But the baby started sliding down the hill on the snowboard. I'm like, Jesus, what is going on here? The baby was enjoying himself, was giggling and was wiggling and wibbling. And somebody even made a comment. It says, she wibbled, she wobbled, but she just don't fall. The baby was wrapped up warm in a glove. She had on a one-piece outfit. And it was so cute, just this high. That child was not even more than, I don't know, 18 inches high. Remember, I don't know, 20 inches, I don't know how tall 18 months old babies are. But that's how big the baby was. But my point is... The perception of the parents is that 18-month-old baby, first of all, can be out in the snow. If you were born in Africa or in the desert and they brought you over to this place where there is snow, there is no way my baby or anybody's baby that I know, like I said, birds of a feather flock together, is going to be on a snowboard that because we will first of all be scared you will not even be outside in the first place, let alone in the snow. Now, this was the making of an Olympic gold medalist child. Because this child was already snowboarding at 18 months. When this child grows up, he's going to be snowboarding off of Mount Everest. Perception. My perception was that child needed to be warm, wrapped up, bundled up in the house somewhere with the fire going on. Because that's how we grew up. It's your culture. So your culture determines how high you will go. How many of you know I'm never going to win an Olympic gold medal snowboarding? Not unless I want to do that now. <laughs> exactly. I even thought about that. I'm never ever going to rob a bank. Because that's not what I think about. As a man thinketh, so is he. You will bring forth that which you think. Your perception, your culture, also determines how you spend your time. Who you spend your time with. Who do you spend time with? I want to let you know that the five people closest to you, it is already established that the five people that speak into your life, you take advice from, are the people that influence you the most. You are no more than 10 to 15% variation, give or take a few, in income level than the five people closest to you. If you make $10,000, your friends might be making $15,000, $12,000, $9,000, and another one maybe $10,000 like you. You're all about the same level. It's hard for you to have people speak into your life and you're sitting at $10,000 and you have a close friend that's making $150,000. What do we say? People say in Africa, that's not my level. Who gave you a level? You determine your own level. Why should your grandparents from years ago still speak into your life? I am here for breakthrough. Power of Christ International Ministries exists for the transformation. You are going to be lifted up into a whole other level. For Christ died. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Glory be to God most high. How do you spend your time? You spend your time reading? Or you spend your time on social media? Chatting with the five people who are not going anywhere. And not lifting you out of where you are already. They keep flooding your phones with videos and things that keep you at the same level. Or even take you lower. My mom used to say if you cannot take me higher... Then leave me where I am. Don't take me lower. 
But I want to encourage you to hang with people who will always take you higher. This ministry will take you higher. Your culture determines how big you think. If everybody in the village you were born only had a mud hut, you are only probably going to build a three-bedroom concrete brick house. And most likely, they will go ahead and paint the house. And that will be the only painted house in the village. Check out most African villages. That's the one person that made it. And that's the house to say they made it. But I want you to understand also that you can move out of your comfort zone. Blow yourself by reading, by looking at images, looking at pictures. Create in your imagination. Imagine wealth of imagination is power. If you can think it, you can achieve it. How did we get to space? Somebody decided one day it is possible to go to space. Let's see if that's possible. All of you all start calculating stuff. Let's see if we can go to space. How effective you are is also determined by your culture. Do you come from a home where if you make 70% on your grade report card, everybody's good at the house and happy for you? If you are a C-level student, everybody's happy for you. That's your culture. If you can determine and break away from the programming that is in you, your culture, your subconscious, the embedded paradigm that you have, if you can shift your logic, your logic is how you think and how you determine what is possible. I have a particular friend, and that is the Apostle Desmond Thomas. And I love Apostle Desmond Thomas for one reason. He's a man of faith. If I need somebody to pray with, I call Apostle Desmond Thomas to agree. He don't want to know what you want. He says, if that is your faith, I agree. There are plenty of Christians that you want to call for prayer. And they will tell you, huh, that is too big. Be reasonable. I don't want to be reasonable people around me. People who want to tell me to be reasonable. Then there are those who want to be nice and say, come on now, be realistic. I'm not realistic. God is not realistic. God is eternal. God said, let us make man. There was no man. Somebody in heaven, Jesus and the Holy Ghost would have said to him, Father, let's be realistic here. We can make some angels around here. We can do the clouds. We can make some more fire, some more lightning. We can do some archangels, the cherubims, the seraphims, the, the far-faced beasts. Let's make some more of them. But what is this man that thou art mindful of him? Or this son of man that you want to start visiting him? Be realistic, God. No. God is not realistic. God is eternal. God is of the God kind. God is of the God class. You were made in his image after his likeness. You are of the God kind. You are of the God class. I want you to think a thought, a plan, a purpose that blows your own mind. When you finish writing, it should scare you. If you have a plan that does not scare you, it does not scare Satan. It does not scare anybody. You're going to make a change. In your life, determine for yourself today as Jacob made a change for his life. And Laban say, state your wages and I will give it. I am telling you today, go to God and state your wages and God will give it. You have a blank check. You have a blank check. In our ministry, I have asked people before to state your wages and watch yourself get to that level. I have asked people to state your schedule and watch your schedule be adjusted to what you say it should be. Even though your boss had told you they don't have the availability, it will be created for you. Hallelujah. 
I move and the walls move before me. Jordan divides before me. The Red Seas divide before me. The walls come down before me. You should be saying the walls come down before me too. Your mindset should be like this. I am trying to make carbon copies of Jesus Christ and God Almighty. That what make you a Christian. Because you are Christ-like. Christ-like. Be like God. God thinks big. He had one son. And he won't multiply billions of sons. And he has them today. He took Abraham outside, Genesis 15, 5. He said, look at the stars, if you can count them, so shall your seed be. And as the sun of the seashore innumerable, so shall your seed be. If you want to look at your bank account and you say, I have $7.5 million in there, then so shall your bank account be. If you can say, I live on a house with 25 acres of land, then so shall it be. Some people are still waiting on 40 acres and a mule, but you still have not called it forth. Call forth 40 acres and a mule, and you will have 40 acres and a mule. Nobody is going to give it to you. I want you to know that the Lord our God, the Almighty, Controls heaven and earth. Satan does not control the wealth of the world. You do not have to compromise with Satan. You do not have to go see any voodoo man, any obia man, any more man, nobody. You do not have to see anybody from the kingdom of darkness to give you what God has given to you in the book. Amen. It's in the book. Yes. It's in the house. And it's for you. The problem is nobody told you that Jesus died and gave it to you. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The change you make today must, absolute, I'm saying must, the change you make in today, your mind, in your mind today, must be big. It must blow your mind. The change must be huge. And the change will be permanent. Amen. When I say you are wealthy, I don't mean you just make another $20,000. You're changing tax brackets. Yes. Glory be to God most high. Amen. The wealth of God belongs to you. The transfer of wealth. Christians have been saying, we're waiting for wealth transfer. God just transferred all of Laban's wealth to Jacob. And Christians are still saying, show me where it happened. Turn off that television. Turn off all those alphabet news networks that put you down in life, but don't tell you how to prosper. Every single last one of them have a million dollar contract. And they're telling you the news, sitting on million dollar paychecks. Why are you looking at them, staying in abject poverty? And they're telling you to blame somebody else why you are not wealthy. And who has not caught you a check? Caught yourself a check! Glory be to Jesus. Caught yourself a stimulus check. Write your tickets and occupy till I come. That's what the Lord says. Manifest. This is the ingenuity of God. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give it up for God. Power of Christ International Ministries. A ministry dedicated to bringing you the undiluted word of God with power and understanding. Our vision is to teach and preach the Bible as the authoritative word of God and watch lives transformed through the anointing power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We hold fast to the scripture in Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Our campaign is to reach our city and surrounding cities with the gospel of Jesus, one house at a time. The gospel shall be preached, lives will be saved and transformed. Hell will be empty, heaven will be full, for the kingdom of God is at hand. 
The harvest is truly plenty, but the laborers are few. So report for duty every Saturday at 308 Claremont Avenue, Decatur, Georgia, 30030 at 1130 a.m. Together we will build God's kingdom by faith.